In this video, I'm going to focus on dipole-dipole forces. So what exactly is a dipole-dipole force? Before we can answer that, let's understand the basic interactions between positive and negative charges. Whenever you have two like charges next to each other, what's going to happen? So if I put two positive charges close together, what do you think is going to happen? These two will feel an electrostatic force that will cause them to accelerate in the opposite direction. Likewise, if I put two other similar charges, two negative charges together, they will repel. Like charges will always repel, but opposite charges will attract. So let's say if I put a positive charge next to a negative charge, these two will feel a force of attraction. A good example of a particle with a full charge is an ion. For example, the sodium ion is attracted to a chloride ion. As we mentioned before, opposite charges attract. Now what about a dipole? What exactly is a dipole? And how is it different from an ion? An ion is a single particle with a net charge. It could be a net positive charge or a net negative charge. An ion is not neutral. Now an atom, just to compare it, is electrically neutral. At least most atoms are. Now an object that's polarized basically is a dipole. So this is a polarized object. One side is positive, the other side is negative. So overall, this object is neutral because if you add up the charges, it adds up to zero. However, you do have separation of charge. One portion of this object is positive, the other side is negative. So this object has a dipole. When you think of di, di means two. There's two regions of charge. The left side is positive, the right side is negative. And this is the case of a polar atom. A polar atom, or even a polar molecule, contains different regions of charge. So let's say if we have a molecule that consists of two atoms. One side might be positive, and the other side might be negative. Now, instead of having a full positive charge and a full negative charge, we might be dealing with partial charges. So overall, this molecule is still neutral, but one region is positive and another region is negative. A good example of this type of molecule is carbon monoxide. Carbon monoxide is polar. This is the Lewis structure of CO. So why is this molecule polar? Well, for one reason, it has to do with the fact that the CO bond is a polar bond. The electronegativity of carbon is 2.5, and the electronegativity of oxygen is 3.5. So oxygen is more electronegative than carbon. As a result, it pulls the electrons toward itself. And so carbon bears a partial positive charge because it loses electron density to oxygen, and oxygen bears a partial negative charge. And so we have an object that looks like this, where one side is positive and the other side is negative. So this is a dipole. It's a polarized molecule. So now that we know what a dipole is, what exactly is a dipole-dipole force or a dipole-dipole interaction? A dipole-dipole force is an intermolecular force that occurs between molecules. So let me give you a visual illustration of it. So let's draw two polarized objects, and we're going to light it up. Now, as we said before, opposite charges attract each other. So the negative charge of one object is attracted to the positive charge of the other object. And so this electrostatic force of attraction between two 
polar molecules is a dipole force. So these are dipole-dipole forces. Here we have one dipole and another dipole. So it's the force between two dipole molecules. In the case of carbon monoxide, we need to line up two carbon monoxide molecules together. So as we said before, the carbon atom is partially positive and the oxygen atom is partially negative. So the dipole-dipole interaction that exists between two carbon monoxide molecules is the attraction between the oxygen of one molecule and the carbon of another. Now, make sure you distinguish the attraction between these two atoms as opposed to the attraction between these two atoms. So the bond that holds the carbon-oxygen atoms together, that is a covalent bond. And it is associated with an intra-molecular force. Intra means within. However, this bond, that's a weaker bond, it attracts two separate carbon monoxide molecules together. That is based on an intermolecular force, or you can call it an intermolecular bond. And that intermolecular force is due to the dipole-dipole interaction between the two CO molecules. So make sure you understand that intramolecular forces are a lot stronger than intermolecular forces. It's very difficult to break a covalent bond, but it's very easy to break a dipole-dipole bond. The bond between molecules is a lot weaker than the bonds between or within a molecule, rather. Now, if you're taking a test and you want to determine which molecule has dipole-dipole forces, you need to determine which molecule is polar. So let me give you an example. If you're comparing carbon dioxide versus sulfur dioxide, which one would you say has dipole-dipole forces? Which of these two molecules is polar? So let's draw both. So this is carbon dioxide. That's the Lewis structure for it. And on the right, we have sulfur dioxide, which has a bent molecular geometry as opposed to a linear molecular geometry that we see in CO2. So looking at these two molecules, which one do you think is polar? Well, the first thing you need to look at is the bond. We need to compare the carbon-oxygen bond with the sulfur-oxygen bond. Now, we know the electronegativity values of carbon and oxygen. It's 2.5 and 3.5. So the electronegativity difference is 1.0. Now, keep in mind, in order for a bond to be polar, the EN difference has to be 0.5 or more. Now, the electronegativity of sulfur is also 2.5. And so the sulfur-oxygen bond is polar, just like the carbon-oxygen bond. So in both cases, we have polar bonds. But now, are the two molecules polar? So now we need to draw the dipole moments of the bonds. To draw the dipole moment, it's going to point from the partially positive carbon atom, and it's going to point towards the partially negative oxygen atom. So the arrow always faces the electronegative atom. So notice that these two arrows, they go in opposite directions. They cancel out. So therefore, there is no net dipole moment in the CO2 molecule, which means that it's nonpolar. However, due to the bent shape of the sulfur dioxide molecule, it is polar. There is a net dipole that points in this direction. Now, let's say if you're in physics and you wish to add two vectors. If you have a vector going in this direction and a vector going in this direction, you know that the x components of those two vectors will cancel. One is going to the left and one is going to the right. However, the y components of those two vectors add up because both of these are going in the negative y direction. And so therefore, 
the net dipole of SO2 based on the way it's drawn, the net dipole moment is downward, which points towards the oxygen atoms. So therefore, because SO2 has a net dipole moment, it is a polar molecule. Now, because SO2 is polar, that means that it's going to have dipole-dipole interactions. The sulfur atom is partially positive with respect to the electronegative oxygen atoms, which are partially negative. So if we draw a picture, let's say this is the sulfur atom, and these two are the oxygen atoms. Let me use a different color to indicate it. So let's use yellow for sulfur and red for oxygen. So the sulfur atom has a partial positive charge, and the oxygen atoms contain a partial negative charge. So now this is going to be attracted to another sulfur dioxide molecule. So the sulfur of one molecule is attracted to the oxygen atom of another. And so that interaction is the dipole-dipole interaction. It's an interaction between one dipole molecule and another dipolar molecule. And so that's it. So now you know what makes up dipole-dipole forces. It's basically the electrostatic force of attraction between one polar molecule with another polar molecule.